almost live from the Herbert I. Greenberg Studios at WHIG. It's up late with Sam Bass. Thank you, Scott Smith, and thank you to everyone for tuning in tonight. We have a great show for you. You know, it's getting close to Valentine's Day and love is in the air. And Linda Loveland is in our green room. That's right. Linda Loveland, former anchor from WRAL and radio personality. She's our special guest hanging out in the green room. We're going to get to her later. We're going to find out what she's doing now. But let's get back to the Valentine's Day thing for a minute. I want to take a minute to talk about this holiday a little bit and let people know exactly what you're celebrating. You think it's about candy and flowers and sweet little cards, right? Let me read you a little history here. Valentine's Day started in ancient Rome as a three-day festival with a bunch of drunk, naked people. Hmm. Well, I guess that part hadn't changed much. But anyway, the ancient Romans would brutally sacrifice a couple of poor animals, get drunk, and have a matchmaking lottery where the men would draw names of women from a jar and they would be paired up to do drunk and naked things. <gasps> oh, no. That's kind of like a really sick version of spin the bottle, right? So for the remainder of the festival, this would go on. Doesn't sound very romantic at all to me. It actually gets worse. Later on, sometime in the third century AD, a Roman emperor executed a couple of guys named Valentine on February 14th. And it became known as St. Valentine's Day. Over the following centuries, the festival became intertwined with other pagan festivals of love and fertility happening around the same time. And eventually, you knew it would happen. Hallmark got involved. And, and now we have it as a sweet, sappy holiday we all know as love. Instead of the brutal, bloody day it originally was. <laughs> now there are some folks who go all out, buy jewelry, go out to dinner, that kind of thing, have a big old time. Or they go to CVS and get a box of candy and a card like me, call it a day. So that brings me to my top five list tonight. I have them here. Real Valentine's cards, folks. We're top notch on here. So they, here they are, the, the five worst Valentine's cards. Number five. Oh, look. This one is from Joe Biden to his wife, Jill. Maybe I can get through the gibberish and make it make sense. To my Valentine, Jill, after all these years, I'm still falling for you. In fact, I'm falling everywhere I go. Off my bike, down the steps, up on the stage. Well, I guess it was kind of sweet. Love, Joe. Aww. Number four. We're equal on this show, folks. This one's from Donald Trump. To his wife, Melania. My dear Melania, I should say, this is huge. <laughs> My dear Melania. I know things have been stormy between us. Wait a minute. Isn't Stormy the actress that he was supposedly had an affair with? Anyway, going on here. My dear Melania, I know things have been stormy between us, but you have grabbed my heart in the way I grabbed... Never mind, I can't finish that. <laughs> Number three. This one is from Ozzy Osbourne to his wife, Sharon. I'm going to do my best Ozzy here. Hopefully you can understand me because you can't understand him. There we go. Sharon, I got you the most beautiful dove for Valentine's Day, but I can't remember what I did with it. So I got you this bloody card instead. I seem to recall an incident with Ozzy and a dove here. Maybe this goes back to the ancient Romans and the animal sacrifices. <laughs> Number two. Yeah. I'm very hesitant to read this one. From Bill Cosby. Dear Valentine, I promise you this is just a candy heart and not a quaalude. Here, try one. Look, it even says just relax. Oh no. 
That is not cool. You know, I've never been able to watch these pudding pop commercials in, in, the same since Bill went through his stuff. Creep. All right, here it is. The number one. Worst Valentine's card you would ever want to receive. Pretty bad, it's from Jeffrey Dahmer. Huh? That's ought to be a good one. Dear Valentine, I would love to eat your heart out. Love, Jeffrey. Well, simple and to the point, I, it's gotta be kinda older because I think somebody shanked him in prison several years ago, but this is, I guess is out of the archives, but uh, pretty tough. We'll be right back. Sit tight. Linda Loveland's coming right up. Metro Maintenance has provided fast, reliable services in Nash, Hedgecombe, and Halifax counties for over 35 years. Metro Maintenance offers services for residential, commercial, and institutional facilities. These services include heating and cooling, electrical, plumbing, and general repairs. Our numerous years of experience, knowledge, and resources help us to accomplish our mission of serving our customers with superior service achieved through integrity and hard work. All of our work is guaranteed. For service, call 252-977. 2730 or find us on the web at metro-maintenance.com welcome back i'm sitting here with linda loveland in person folks right here in rocky mount it is such a pleasure to be here i really appreciate you coming and doing this it's a good time Thanks i've been for watching you on tv for all those years and it's just uh just a treat to have you here oh thank you um so i'm going to get this out of the way how tall are you <laughs> flat-footed i am Six one and a half. Okay. Six one and a half. You're still taller than me, flat foot. I'm six one, so uh, that's you're, you're kind of a tall girl. I, I'm kind of tall. It's funny. I used to tell people I'm like you know five thirteen and a half, and sometimes <laughs> they wouldn't get it, and they'd say, "I swore you <laughs> were at funny. least six foot." But that's yeah. funny. Well, so my my daughter's kind of tall too, and she likes being tall. I do too. You, know, you stand out in a picture. <laughs> uh, yeah, in fact, all you could see of my pictures usually is from here up because I'm always in the back. <laughs> That's good. So you grew up on a farm, correct? I did. I so, did. you know, you started out livestock show, shows, things like that. Mm -hmm. I remember watching WRL back in the day. You would be on the State Fair milking cows and stuff like that. <laughs> That's that, my uh, favorite. So how did you get started? You know, you grew up on a farm. Yep. I'm sure your parents were farmers. Yep. Tell me a little bit about it. Yeah, so I grew up on a farm in southwest Missouri, south of Springfield, Missouri. Uh, maybe you've heard of Bass Pro Shops? Yes. Springfield, course. Missouri is a home of Bass Pro Shops. Oh, I didn't know that. Yes, yes. So I grew up uh, there on a farm just south of Springfield. I uh, grew up there my whole life, was in 4-H FFA, showed cattle all through the summer, was very involved in that. Didn't really know what I wanted to do in school, but uh, ended up majoring in radio, TV, film. Went to school at the university, finished up at the University of North Texas actually, and then my career was born. <laughs> did, where did you start your broadcast career? KLST in San Angelo, Texas. Okay. I think it was market 150, 148, something like that. Hmm. And then from there went to Columbia, Missouri, and from there WRAL. So you sh getting back to your farm life, you, were, you used to show livestock at fairs too? Every summer, yeah. Every summer. So how old were you at this period? I time? probably started in middle school. So I was maybe 11, 12, 10, 11, 12, right around there. Wow. Yeah. So you have a big family, you have a lot of siblings? Two older sisters, they're 11 and 12 years older than me. So I was kind wow. of like an only child. Yeah, I think it was a little bit of an oops. Yeah, well, <laughs> I have a brother that's eight years younger. We always say he was a, he was a mistake. <laughs> he said he was a surprise. A so. surprise. Yeah, yeah. So, so are they, tall like you are? They are. Um, I've got uh, my oldest sister is six foot, my middle sister is five ten, and then I'm six one and a half. So yeah, I'm the biggest. Okay. So I've got a picture of you standing with a group of other young women and you're you're kind of towering over them a little bit. We're gonna put <laughs> I'm the picture sure up. I am. <laughs> was this at a fair what was this? Uh, yeah, oh, so that I was in a, that was up for the National Shorthorn Queen. That was a competition in Denver, Colorado. First time I ever took a plane, but hmm. I was the Missouri Shorthorn Queen, and so we were there for the national competition. <laughs> you were the Shorthorn Queen. <laughs> yes. That doesn't even make sense. Breed of cattle. Yes, that's what I showed. That's what I showed wow. cattle all summer long. I showed um, Shorthorn, 
So I was the shorthorn queen for Missouri. <laughs> That's the interesting fact. You will not hear this anywhere else, folks. Right? <laughs> so you were Capital Broadcasting Company for about 20 years, correct? Yeah, sure was. And you know, first on TV, then on radio. Mm -hmm. How did that transition go between the two? You know, it's funny. It was actually kind of hard uh, going from TV to radio because in TV, you have to be very objective. So you're right down the middle of the road. You can't have an opinion. You are just giving the news and you let people uh, have their own opinion, right? Mm -hmm. Make their own opinion from that. But when you go to radio, to have a good radio show, you have to have an opinion. Right. You know, you can't just be some chump who's just saying what's going on. You've got to have an opinion. That just makes it more interesting, right? Mm -hmm. And that was the hardest thing for me to do. They said, Linda, have an opinion, you know, about something. <laughs> that was the hardest thing. But making the transition from radio to TV, going back to TV, I think actually loosened me up a little mm -hmm. bit and made me a better anchor. So did, when you went to radio, do you, does that save you time in the morning getting ready? Yes. So you got to roll out of bed in your pajamas and go to work? Uh, almost. It did save me time, <laughs> but I still got ready. I, I always wore appropriate clothing, <laughs> but it did save me some time, yes. Which one did you, did you enjoy one more than the other? Uh, I enjoyed both, actually. Uh, you know, the funny thing with radio was that you started talking and having this conversation with like three or four other people in the room, and you forget how many thousands of people are listening, mm -hmm. just like in TV, but it was a little more um, conversational, a little more personal, and sometimes you kind of forgot that a little bit. Do you still keep in touch with Bill Jordan? Yeah, everybody. Everybody yeah. from both TV and radio. Yeah, it's great yeah. to see everybody. We still try to get together. I used to love listening to you guys in the morning. It was a great radio show. Oh, thanks. It's, I appreciate it. It's just not that. the same as it used to be these days. I don't... Everything is different, Sam, uh, isn't it? Is it? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so now you're working for Farm Bureau. Mm -hmm. So what exactly are you doing for them? I'm the Director of Communications for the North Carolina Farm Bureau Federation. So this is the agriculture side and not the insurance side. We are gotcha. the voice of agriculture. So you've come full circle, kind of. I really have. That's what makes really it kind cool. of interesting. Yeah, I didn't think I would be going back to that, but the way things worked out, and it's been fantastic. So do you think your experience with TV and radio has helped you in this role? Yeah, absolutely. I actually do a lot of the same things. We're sharing stories, and that's what I did in both TV, really, mm -hmm. and radio in different ways, was sharing stories, telling stories, and that's what I'm doing now. So do you see any big issue right now facing farmers in North Carolina? That yeah, right to farm, um, protections, uh, as water issues that can always be an issue, mm -hmm. labor issues. Just, labor is an issue for everybody, for every business. Yeah. There aren't oh, yeah. enough people to work. Exactly. I know the, the wastewater from hog farms, stuff like that, it's a big issue. It, it is a big issue. Um, something that they're great at dealing with and, and working to change and to mm -hmm. make better all the time. But there are all kinds of rules and regulations regarding that. So they're, it's a very strict and very monitored thing. I recently saw a show on Netflix, this uh, You Are What You Eat. Don't watch it. It's about, and there's a law, North Carolina farms are featured in there. And it's not positive stuff. No, and you have to remember who makes a lot of those films, right, too. That's something right. to dig into. So There was very some sort of an agenda I could pick up in there. So, yeah, yeah, that's something to keep in mind. Okay, so we're going to move on. So I was stalking your Instagram. <laughs> I'm not a stalker. Uh-oh. I was doing research, actually. Oh, is that what they call it? And I came across a picture of a contraption. <laughs> I want you to tell me exactly the story behind it. Are you referring to the banana hammock? I guess that's what it is. That's not the same banana hammock I'm thinking about, but tell me about the banana hammock in the picture. <laughs> well, you know, when you think of banana hammock, there's certainly something that comes to mind. This is not that. This is something completely uh, different. This is born out of necessity, which I guess they both are, technically. But this particular banana hammock came about because we have a dog that is always on the countertop, oh, reaching no. up to get everything. And he is big enough that he can reach to the back of the counter and get ah. everything. No matter how far you push things back, he can reach it. And he loves bananas. So he would always snag, and we'd find the, the tips from the bunch of bananas somewhere well, behind the chaise <laughs> lounge. He would take a whole bunch and sneak behind there and eat them, and that's all we would find left. Well, I have, I have dog, a dog now. I had another dog before, and one day they got a bunch of bananas down, and, you know, I, exa I know exactly what yes. you're talking about. They do like bananas, though. Sounds it's like you need a banana hammock. Maybe I do. <laughs> I might already have one. Maybe not. All right, so I got another one. I, this, is, this, was, this was freaked me out a little bit. It's a picture of your couch that you cleaned out. <sighs> So I want you to, you know, it's obvious that y'all eat on your couch because there's spoons and forks and stuff in there. We, I'll have to explain the we. And dog hair. <laughs> so, so 
Tell me a little bit about this picture. I feel like I'm being outed with this, kind of. <laughs> So we were doing a cleaning and we thought we, okay, so we got, you know, you take up the couch cushions, there's always stuff everywhere. Well, this particular couch, for whatever reason, you take off the cushions and there's more there than meets the eye. So you clean all that up. So it was clean. And then we started feeling around deep in the corners and this couch has really deep pockets. Like it's mm -hmm. another four inches down along each <laughs> side. So we started reaching up in there, down in there and pulling all this stuff out and it just kept going and it kept going. And that was the final product. Everything so, you see in that picture we found deep in the wedge of, of the couch. Well, I've been told you, you did an inventory. We did an inventory, and, and this is what we that, came and up with. You're going to tell yep. us what was in there. Yep, there was one thing actually you don't see in the picture. Um, they were handcuffs, kids' handcuffs, and I had already started to put th things away, and so that didn't make the picture. I'm glad they were kids' handcuffs because that would be more explaining as you'd have to do. <laughs> exactly. <but go> ahead. <laughs> kids' handcuffs. Okay, so I found we found five forks, four spoons, a pair of pliers, six chapsticks nine writing utensils, pens and pencils, three straws, nail clippers, two Nerf bullets, one bamboo skewer, four AA batteries, 11 candy wrappers, two chip clips, dental floss, a sliced cheese wrapper, 71 cents, Christmas lights remote, which actually came in handy. We finally found that. That was very important. The TV remote, the other TV remote, a uh, zombie run card game. I don't even know what that is. I don't remember seeing it. Hmm. 13 trading cards, Ten Apple gift or a ten dollar Apple gift card and two popsicle sticks. Wow. So what did yeah. you do with all this stuff when you got it out of there? You just threw it in the trash? Uh everything except the utensils. We now, washed those suckers and kept them. Right? Yay, we kept those. So there was dog hair, so yeah. you have you have dogs. We have dogs. Tell me about your dogs. We have two old English sheep dogs. They are almost eleven years old, and then we have a three year old mix that's lab, Great Dane, and um, uh, uh, Bloodhound. Very wow. strange mix. That Very fun dogs. Mix. It is. And then we just have, we just got a 15 week old uh, Great Dane puppy. Wow. Yeah. So, so he, we have a house. It's a Great full. Dane and he's a puppy. He's already big, right? 40 pounds. Wow. 40 My dog pounds. is full grown. She's a chocolate lab and she's 60 pounds. <laughs> she's full grown. So, um, she's going to be big and. Yeah, I, I would think so. Yep. So you're married. Yep. And um, how long have you been married? 22. Two years. You know, so on Valentine's Day, does your husband give you the dinner and the jewelry or box of candy and the card like I do? We're more of a, he knows I love chocolate. So honestly, mm -hmm. I prefer the chocolate and like uh, some, he usually gets chocolate and flowers and we'll do dinner. Y'all don't yeah. sacrifice animals or anything like no, that? No, we ha not in a That's long time. Good. I'm glad. Yeah. Not in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> Just checking. Keeping it real. So my staff, I've got a crack research staff. They're out of Macon, North Carolina. Mm -hmm. They tell me you have three kids, three yep. children. Tell yes. me about them. 16, 18, and 20. So, mm -hmm. yes, uh, uh, they're very busy. They're very involved with sports. I've got two in college right now, one that's still in high school at Apex High School, a junior finishing up. And so between sports, my oldest wants to be um, a veterinarian, a large animal, an exotic really? veterinarian. My son doesn't quite know what he wants to do yet. We're still figuring that out. And my youngest doesn't want, doesn't know what she wants to do quite yet either, but she's in the middle of playing volleyball and just wants to do that in college. So we have a, a picture of your daughter, and she, you said you, she was almost as tall as you. Mm-hmm. My youngest is five, almost 5'11", yeah. So. Is it a competition, I mean, a height competition? It's right? funny, it's more of a competition with my son. He <laughs> likes to, to be taller than me. He's 6'3", almost 6'4". Oh, so, yeah. yeah. How like, old is he? He's uh, 18. Oh, yeah. He likes to tell me, he's like, Mom, well, you're looking really short these days. <laughs> <laughs> so he starts looking down on you. That's a big deal. That's a weird feeling, yes. So speaking of you know the competition, you played volleyball. Volleyball. Mm -hmm. So um, in high school, is that correct? Yep, in high school. Mm -hmm. I would think you would be a great volleyball player. It's fun. Yeah, I only played uh, in my high school, so I mean it was it was a good time. I played more basketball than I did volleyball, mm -hmm. and I but right now I play uh, in some volleyball leagues like the Y League and an yeah. Apex League and that kind of thing. Kind of keeps God, you. I hate to be across the net going. from you. <laughs> well, they're all men's nets, so they're a little bit higher, so yeah. that makes it kind of tough. But it's fun, keeping keeping you moving, you know. Have you ever played? Uh, this is a trick question here, so be careful how you answer. This could our our friendship could hinge on this. Ooh, okay. Have you ever played pickleball? No, Great. never played. That's well, the one start. thing. Okay. It's, it, all it is is um, tennis with a wiffle ball. Have you even attempted? No. Why it's not? It's for old people, not young people like us. Everybody plays pickleball. Even yeah. my daughter's played pickleball. Well, that's fine. My daughter plays pickleball too, so I, I give these people a hard time. 
but it's, um, I guess it's okay. Well, maybe we should take the show on the road out to a pickleball court and see how that goes. Maybe, oh, maybe <laughs> not. So, you have a bit of a daredevil side, I'm guessing, because we found a picture of you repelling down a building. That was a benefit for Special Olympics. Uh, that was, I just did it without even thinking. I just tried to s sort of shut down while I did that. Um, it's for a great cause, and it's to raise awareness. And, and WREL anchors had done that every year, and mm -hmm. they asked me to do that. And without really thinking about it, I just sort of agreed. It's sort of one of those, like, yeah, I'll do that. And then the closer you get to it, you're thinking, that may have been a bad choice. Yeah. I'm not sure how I feel about that. So they kind of had to twist your arm a little bit, or did you just, you didn't think about no, it? No, I was like, no, it. I'm going to do it. Oh, my God, what did I just sign up for? You know, one of those kind of things. So uh, I, can I, I think I remember um, um, Elizabeth Gardner did it. Yep, yep. And who else? Gosh, I think, I don't know if Ken Smith eventually ended up doing I it. I want to say maybe Amy Wilmot did it. There, there are several people who have done it. And it's got like every year edge. thing. Mm -hmm. Every year. Off the Wells Fargo building. In yeah, Raleigh. yeah, every year. But what was interesting about that time, so we had did some training before, and they say you just sort of like, you know, you go over sort of backwards, so your back is facing mm -hmm. out. So you're facing the top of the building and, you know, all that's out back there. But then when it came time, and you're also live on the news mm -hmm. at the same time, right? So there's that added pressure. So we get to the edge. I'm all suited up. I get to the edge, it's all the building. I can't remember how many stories it was. It was like scary. But they said, okay, now, so this time though, we want you to just sit on the edge and like dip over the side like you're getting into a pool. So I'm sitting on the edge of this tall building in downtown Raleigh with my hands on the edge. And they said, okay, just push yourself down over the edge like you're slow, and then just turn around and face the building. Well, I'd never done that before. So you're looking out over the entire city of oh, Raleigh, God. how many stories up? And then you go over the edge and then just have to flip. And then that's all live on air. But we did it, did it, got it done. Well, I don't know if I could do that or not. I'm not really good with heights. <laughs> well, it was the fastest descent they'd ever had. <laughs> <laughs> you want to get it over with, I guess. <laughs> At that point, it's like, oh, let's get down. All the way down. So what's next for Linda Lovelin? Is there anything you haven't tried that you want to do or any place you want to visit, that kind of thing? I wouldn't mind doing some traveling, but I've been so fortunate that I've been able to see a lot and mm -hmm. do a lot, and I feel I'm pretty, I'm really fulfilled with all of that, and I love what I do for Farm Bureau, getting to share stories of agriculture and the people who feed us, so um, there's not left, a lot left on the table. I mean, I can always like to see a lot of different things, but yeah, I actually, I love what I do. I don't want to stop anytime soon. So nothing left on the bucket list, like Learning how to play pickleball, anything like that? No, I've even raced a, a car um, at Charlotte. Wow. You know, I did that one time too. I remember Mike so Easley did that, the former governor, mm -hmm. wrecked it. Remember that? He I wrecked do. one. I do. You didn't do that, did you? you didn't no, it. no. Yeah. I think my average speed was 131 by the time you took the, you know, the, everything into the straightaways. People don't realize how corners. high those banks are. It's really banked. Like some of the smaller tracks, like you can barely walk up the bank. It's yeah, I'm, I'm, I've been out there on the Charlotte Motor Speedway and it is really unbelievable how how high that bank is yeah it's a lot of fun and so i've got another question okay since you grew up around cattle and you might want to re defer this question to mark roberts okay and there's a oh, reason oh boy i saw y'all in raleigh christmas parade by the way do you know how to play sit tight it's a surprise the cowbell <laughs> that may be the the easiest instrument, yes! So I know that Mark I Roberts do. had a t-shirt that said more cowbell. More cowbell. I remember that because he plays the drums. Yes, he does. He's so, a multi-talented kind of guy. Yeah, he's kind of a crazy guy. <laughs> well, look, I want to thank you for taking the time to come out here and visiting with us. It's been a, a real pleasure for you to be here. Thank you. you I really appreciate love the invitation. To have you back sometime. I would love that. Thank you so it. much. Thank you. Thank you. We'll be right back. Metro Maintenance has provided fast, reliable services in Nash, Hedgecombe, and Halifax counties for over 35 years. Metro Maintenance offers services for residential, commercial, and institutional facilities. These services include heating and cooling, electrical, plumbing, and general repairs. Our numerous years of experience, knowledge, and resources help us to accomplish our mission of serving our customers with superior service achieved through integrity and hard work. All of our work is guaranteed. For service, call 252-977. 2730 or find us on the web at metro-maintenance.com 
Hey, I want to thank my special guest, Linda Loveland, for coming down to Rocky Mountain, visiting with us tonight, had a great conversation. My next guest is a young man by the name of Austin Myrick. He is the brew mill manager out at Rocky Mount Mills, and he will be bringing some special refreshments for us when he comes. So join us every Thursday night at 10 o'clock right here on Up Late with Sam Bass. I'll see you soon.